it's that time again. You know, in the beginning, science and religion were pretty much the same. They, they worked together, and just like alchemy and chemistry were the same, and eventually they, they divided. Then there was astronomy and astrology, and basically the same, and of course it divided. And there was, uh, in every field of endeavor, it seems like they have kind of invited. Then Einstein came up with the basic theory of, uh, or the general theory of relativity, which really blew science away and, and led the way in for quantum physics. And even today, quantum physics are, are changing. Uh, there are a lot of different interpretations for quantum physics, and they, uh, uh, some mystical and some rather uh, mundane. But by the same token, we're presenting today the bare facts. I think that, and I've discussed this a lot with my friends this week, and they, they keep telling me the same thing. Why don't you tell everybody what your main goal is? Well, I did. The main goal is to get you to think for yourself, to use logic and, and that wisdom that's already within you to determine what's right or wrong for you. And be open enough so that you can change your mind if you get more information or, or come up with a different revelation. It just makes good sense. And it's good for you. Now, religion became so steeped with mysticism and fear and control, and just like politics. And of course, again, it seems like some religions are trying to put politics back into religion. In the past, Science, philosophy, and religion were all the same field of study, as I said before. And as they separated, they looked at the world in their own way. I think science is now beginning to look again at the fundamental forces that explain the reality in a way that brings together new fields of, uh, of thought. A hundred years ago, and that's not too long ago, think about it. That's called modern times, the 20th century. And they, they were still uh, giving no compromise. And that's the problem. You see, a belief is just that. You believe something. You don't always need facts to back it up. You don't need investigation to back it up. A belief is just loaded with doubt because you, there's nothing there that makes it solid. And, and the science is still that way. They, well, I remember when, when Einstein came up with this theory and they thought why the atom was the smallest thing. You couldn't get anything smaller than the atom. And now they found out there's hundreds of things smaller than the atom. And they thought that our, our galaxy was the universe. And I don't want to go back even farther than that when they thought that the sun circled the earth and all that. Nah, I want to tell you what we know now and what we are. Now, I'm not knocking your religion. The fact of the matter is, I think religion has done a lot of good and bad. But I just want to, don't want to disturb your belief system. If you believe something, that's fine. You just keep going ahead and believing it. But I want to give you enough information that you can make some good decisions on your own, that you can determine what's right or wrong for you. Uh, you know, I was watching television today, and I noticed there's a new movie out called The Son of God. And in the trailer, they, they showed the, the character that plays Jesus saying, I am the Son of God. Jesus never said that. Even when they reinterpreted the Bible, they left in this one phrase that he repeated over and over and over again. And that phrase was, I am the Son of Man, the Son of Man. But he also said, the God within, the Father within doeth the works. And that's the truth. You see, that's the whole thing. That's spirit. Now, last week, I told you what you were. You're a spirit, a mind, and a soul in a physical body. And the soul and the spirit so many times are confused, and people think they're the one and the same. They are not one and the same. They're two different things. Your physical body is developing a personality. Your soul is containing your character. And the spirit is what gives it all life. 
I was reading a book, let me get it here, and about the purpose in life. And I found this very interesting. If I ever I question my purpose in life, I may find the answer in knowing that life is a purpose unto itself. He says, I'm alive and I'm living and that's enough. No, that's not enough. I want to know why am I living? What is my ultimate goal? What is my purpose? And that's what will be revealed through facts, the things that we give you here. And each week we're going to reveal more and more and more about you as a person and what you are, where you're headed for, what you're doing. And we'll do it by giving you facts and teaching you the truth about things as we know it today. Will those things change? Well, the basic truth will never change. But the little truths that make it up are rediscovery. For instance, the earth isn't flat, it's round. Little truth. Uh, but it was an accepted fact that it was flat, and if you traveled to the end, you'd fall off and go to hell, I guess. And we're going to talk about all those things, but most important of all, we're going to give you the research that I've done, the research that verifies these things so that you can go on even farther than I have. One last thing. When I talked to my friends this week, they said, you said, coming down to the wire. Does that mean that you're ready for a demise, that you're going to go and die? No. Oh, sure, I will. I don't know when, don't care when. I'm ready, and I feel my house is in order, and I can't think of a better thing to do with my life than to end it in this body and go on from there. But until then, I want to help you because, no, it isn't me and it isn't just you that's down to the wire. It's all of humanity. Look at all the changes that are happening, both technical and natural. That should tell you something. What it tells you is there's nothing permanent but change. And be ready for that change by having all your ammunition ready, meaning you need to know the facts. You need to know what's what so that you can develop more of your spirituality. As my good friend T. Adam C. M. says, Make Jesus proud. And that's the last thing I want to tell you again. You know, here in Arizona, they're right today, they're still talking about this SB uh, 1670 or whatever it is, that they're fighting to make it a, a law that uh, 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 business can deny service on a religious basis, on their thoughts. <laughs> Think about that. And the Christians say, I'm a Christian and so I can't let a homosexual or a thief or whatever into my thing. God, think about Jesus. He spent his entire life with prostitutes, thieves, tax collectors, probably the same thing. Politicians, crooks, probably the same thing. But the idea is he spent all this time with these people. Why? Even his own group today, his disciples would be considered bikers, wild men. Why? Let's make Jesus proud. Let's not cut anybody out of our life. Share this with everybody. Get ready for next week. You're going to love it.